This is Bear with Us Podcast. Uh, can we can we add girl? I mean, we aren't all manly like you. Okay, okay. How's this? This is Bear with Us, girl. No, no, no. More like girl. Like a glitter bear. This is Bear with Us, girl. Perfect. This is Bear with Us, girl, where we stir the honey pot with hot topics, body issues, the adult industry, fashion, news, pop culture, pup culture, and more. From the bear perspective. For and by the community. I can barely stand it. Get it? You're unbearable. <laughs> I just I realized the danger of doing this streaming at home because while that was all happening, I was like picking my nose, scratch my arm, <laughs> being like, I don't know if you're recording yet or not. <laughs> that I can't do in the studio when you're sitting next to me. Uh, well, and for our audience, um, <laughs> this might look a little bit more casual than normal. I haven't shaved like in four days. <laughs> Listen, we have been plagued by COVID, cancellations, travel, family sickness, whatever. But we wanted to, to bring a new episode of Just Hot Topics. So we're actually, uh, we're not in studio. We're streaming from home. So I look homeless. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm glad we're doing this just because like everything that's happening with like trying to travel and everything. I was like, I don't want to miss another episode of us filming. And yeah. I'm just trying to schedule it right now. I'm like, it's not going to happen. So let's just pretend like we're back in lockdown. Yeah. And <laughs> well, I tell knows, you, maybe that's going to happen happen again with monkeypox. Okay, so that so this whole episode uh, brought to you by Bear World Magazine, by the way, and Cybersocket.com. But uh, this whole episode is really just going to be about us talking about hot topics that you and I have been texting about or that have been in headlines because, you know, you and I have very different experiences and different opinions. So let's just start with monkeypox. You texted me and you're like, hey, I'm in line for a vaccine for monkeypox. And I'm like, has it really gotten that serious that now there's like vaccination lines for it going on? So, I mean, all right, here's the thing. Monkeypox is basically, um, it's a, a version of smallpox. And the vaccine is pretty much um, the smallpox vaccine, which, for example, all their parents already have. They already have it. But because smallpox went away, they stopped giving it uh, to us. Um, and oddly enough, in 2019, they actually created a brand new smallpox vaccine just for the hell of it. For fun, for shits and giggles. Um, which we're very lucky because actually the smallpox vaccine, the original one, is very dangerous. There's like a high mortality rate. You can It can spread even just by touch. Um, but the latest one, which I was lucky enough to get, oh my God, it's so easy. Like, I don't know if you've gotten your HPV vaccines. Um, I mean, I do like all my regular, like whatever. I'm just like, load me up, like whatever I need. Okay. You know, because I'm a sure bad boy. Make sure your doctor does that, because especially as gay men, that um, help prevent uh, prostate cancer. Oh well, that's good. Yeah, I'm I'm very much an advocate for sharing that because like a lot of people just don't know about it. Yeah. Um, but when you get a vaccine, your shoulder is so sore for like two days. You don't get sick, but like it just hurts. The monkeypox one was nothing. It was just like a little sore. I made sure to go to the gym after and just like stretch it out, and it was gone. Okay, so like, what exactly is monkeypox? You know, we've been seeing it in the news, but like, what so exactly I, is it? So I have I have now had two friends I know that have gotten it. Um, oh my god! One, it was bad. So he had it for about three weeks. Four days out of it were painful beyond belief. So you'll get the sores like you would of chickenpox, but yeah. he said that wasn't a big deal at all. Like, it didn't really bother him. It was the shooting pain Ooh. that you get from it. It almost sounds like, I don't know if you've ever had shingles. You know, I've heard of shingles and I've known people that have shingles and they say it's the worst pain of their entire lives. Yeah, I had shingles before and that is because oh it's, it's, that's nerve pain. So you just, you literally physically just hurt. Yeah. And I, I'm just, I'm very glad that I was able to get the vaccine because I was like one of the last few in line that got it before they ran out because they didn't expect to have yeah. need this. Um and the only ones that are getting it right now are high risk, like people like HIV, um, people that have been exposed, and people that are sex workers. Basically, the three groups that are ones that like this would affect and spread the most. Well, yeah, because like the the, the rumor is is like it's really just affecting gay men. They're saying like, oh, it's it's our new, you know, so, not lethal, but like it's our new AIDS. Here's the thing that actually they they still don't know yet. 
Like that's that's what spread in the news right away. That they're like, this is it. This is it. This is it. They actually don't know if it is sexually related or just contact related. It's just, for example, when you're having sex, you are making contact. Yeah. So you, don't, you don't know if it is actually from being sexual or if it's like, for example, smallpox can be transferred by just touch, bodily touch. And maybe gay men are just better at touching each other than straight people right now. <laughs> now, aren't you kind of scared because you do, you know, you you are a sex worker, you film with other people. Like, aren't you scared? I'm not scared anymore because, again, like, I was, I yeah. was lucky to get the vaccine early. Um, you know, it's just, I think at this point, sex workers are just used to it. Like, we're used to being the first ones to get, like, a vaccine, the first ones to check up with our doctors, it, I'm not very much afraid of it. Also, plus we literally just went through a pandemic like yeah. every year now. So another one, I'm just like, all right, we'll figure out how to do it. Life will go on. Well, and I was I was hanging out with a bunch of porn stars uh, last week. It was like three events in a row. And we were just laughing because, you know, we were out at the clubs, whatever. People were flirting with people. Some of our friends went home for like a one night stand. And the porn stars were like, yeah, I'm not risking a one night stand because I have to film in two days or I have to do testing tomorrow. That's like porn stars are literally the, the best people to sleep with because they're on top of their test. They're clean. They're not going to be fooling around to risk their job. <laughs> you literally nailed it and like even now even if just the monkey pox now it's like we're trying to find out like hey did you were you able to get the vaccine too okay let's film with each other because we yeah. know that we're, we're safe right now yeah it's always funny how like the porn um, porn stars and sex workers will have the stigma of being the dirtiest when literally we're the cleanest uh, okay, so today I have to ask you, you know, for Go Go for the Gold, there was a bunch of events, they're reviewing por uh, parties and all that. Is it my imagination or have you become more of an extrovert because before you would never go to events, your social media, like I've seen you out at events, at viewing parties. I even saw you with like, I think a beer in your hand. I was like, is that Teddy Bear? <laughs> uh, well, you didn't see me with a beer. Uh, most of these saw me with tequila because okay. that is one of the few <laughs> things that makes me socialize. Um and no, I would not say I'm an extrovert still because I'm still, I'm at least going to events now. Yeah, so you are. The minute the event of what I am expected <laughs> to be there for is done, you have, I'm about, I've pushed myself now to stay at least 15 minutes after. So I'm, I'm, I'm pushing myself, <laughs> but yeah. Well, no. You seem happy. I don't know. I was like, look at him go. You go girls. Like, oh, baby bears growing up. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. And like I also think too, it's it's also that it took me a little bit longer after the pandemic to get comfortable back being yeah. out. I know a lot of people were able to like just snap and throw themselves back in there. For me, I wasn't. Like I got too used to being at home, almost to the point of being agoraphobic. Yeah. So it's take it's gonna take me a while, but she's getting back out there. Well, and that's happened a lot. Um, I've had the opportunity to interview some some of the top gay TikTokers during Pride. And there was this whole thing, you know, they were so used to creating content by themselves at their home. When it came time, they felt a little agoraphobic, like a little scared of going out, you know, and plus they uh, fixed their worth with the videos that they were filming by themselves. So it was like a whole weird kind of like mental breakdown. Um, but we're talking about Gogo for the Gold. The show ended. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because reality TV even like maybe five or six years ago, you did one reality show and then that was it. Like you were going viral and all this. Well, now there's like so many shows on TV. Um, you guys got a lot of press, a lot of attention. What do you think that you benefit, like you yourself as a brand, as an influencer, as a personality, do you think you benefited from doing the show? Cause I know doing the show was like a lot of work. I mean, ultimately every single thing you do does benefit you. Um, I don't, I don't know if you ever, there's like, I forget who the author is, but he studied like all of these greats and all these people that have been successful in different fields. And he discovered they all have one thing in common before they became like famous, before they became successful. They put in 10,000 hours to whatever they were trying to be or do. And basically he realized he's like, there's almost like a mathematical formula to success of just putting in 10,000 hours to whatever you want to do. So that's how I always look at every single project I get to do is just, you know, I'm putting in my 10,000 hours. And then I just think about what I'm doing next. I don't try and like focus on what I already did. You know what I mean? 
would you come back for season two? Oh, one thousand percent. Yeah. Well, your um, outfits went viral. <laughs> I and that. yeah, I, I've already started contacting um, designers because I yeah. think next one I want to actually start paying uh, local queer artists to make some of my costumes because then I can also give them a platform just like Drag Race does with yeah. their costume designers. I know a lot of designers who make, you know, harnesses, who make some custom outfits and custom hats, and I would love to be able to support them. And I think that would be a fun platform that like, each episode, it could be like, oh, so-and-so from here in this state made this part of my outfit. Uh, well, you know how you get, like, great design ideas when you're drunk, or at least I do. I'm like, oh, my God. The other day, I was like, why have we not seen you in a Chewbacca harness? Like, it just makes sense with the fur and, like, the Star Wars motif. I thought, I think I thought, I thought about that recently of, like, I think I should start doing that, like, on TikTok. 100%. Yeah, like a Chewbacca face, just the um, sash. Yes. Chewbacca pants. I just start doing like TikTok dances or something stupid. <laughs> I want to do that. Well, because like, all right, everybody does TikTok dances, but like, I just, I get bored when it's just like another shirtless guy. Yeah, they all they all starting to look the same. Really, really. Yeah, so I'm like, all right, if I'm gonna do it, like, I need to just be a Chewbacca. It's the only way I can mentally be like, I don't hate myself doing this. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to we're going to catch up with each other a little bit and do some hot topics. You have some hot topics. I have some hot topics. Um, I thought maybe we should start with this has been a hot topic, not just this pride, but every pride. But I think there was special focus on this is corporate pride. You know, there's all the jokes that uh, June 1st, all the logos for Target, whatnot, go rainbow. Merchandise is being sold. Disney sells the rainbow ears. And then July 1st comes around and it's gone. Um, even Instagram, when you would put pride in the letters, the rainbow letters would show up, and now that's so, gone. I have I have opinions on both sides of this. You know, I truthfully wish that like there was like a requirement of if you want to do a pride merchandise, some of it has to go to a pride charity. Like I wish that's all that's that was a required. Idea. I just wish it was like, hey, five percent has to yeah. go to the project or something. And then I'm fine with it because like to be honest. When I grew up in a small town, if I was able to go to a grocery store and just see a fucking rainbow, which I get why the conservatives are trying to ban rainbows, because it made me feel like, hey, there's human beings on this planet that say I exist. Right. I, I mean, I, I'm with that 100%. And I mean, and like all corporations are quote unquote bad. All corporations are harming the environment. If we look at the political contributions by board members of any corporation, the money's going to be going somewhere bad that you're not going to agree with, no matter what side you're on. Exactly. Um, and to your point, you know, I was born and raised in Orange County, which is not too far from LA, still ultra conservative. They still have Trump booths up, if you can imagine. And every uh, pride the targets in Orange County would never carry a pride t-shirt. So I was never able to get any of that. This was oh, the wow. first year, because I've been visiting Orange County a lot lately. This was the first year that I went into a Target in Orange County and they had a pride display. And I was passed oh. out because it was right there. Um, and it was pretty much like isolated, but it was still there. <laughs> but like, even, so see how, even see how much of an impact that like, that makes you have like a glimmer of like, wow, yeah. even in a super conservative town, we exist. And again, it sucks because like it's a corporation who you know are paying shitty wages and the yeah. clothes are made by children, but maybe it's gay children that made it. <laughs> They're like, work, that was my t-shirt. That's so inappropriate. <laughs> and, and, I, and I think like I think the the woke side, which they have a point, but I think when you get to the point of pushing too far that like corporations just stop doing it, yeah, then you're just kind of like, okay, well now you just there's just nothing. And, well, that's and, exactly right. And then we would complain that they're not doing anything. So it's like, you know, exactly. take battles. And it's, plus, these large corporations are buying pride float parades, which gives money to that pride organization for that community, you know? Well, not really, no. Um, because usually those organizations that buy the pride parade floats, it gets paid to the organization who puts on pride, who most of them usually illegally pocket the money. <laughs> that's a whole other investigation with teddy bear <laughs> yeah so i was like that's that's not really true that's not really true ellen um because like <laughs> for example i mean look at like weho pride how there's no local vendors in weho pride because their roof space was like ten thousand dollars well meanwhile well, in downtown la pride 
which is a queer event, their booth space is free if you're a queer owned company, which is what it should be. Right. But let's also look because, you know, I've I've been an MC for almost every single Pride. Um, and so I've done DTLA Proud. Now, they weren't booking headliners that they had to pay a lot of money for. They were getting the park donated, whereas We Hope Pride or LA Pride would get, you know, major headliners that they have to pay for. So that money has to come I, from somewhere. I get that, but like, to be honest, I don't give a fuck about seeing, like, Christina at Pride. Because in my head, I'm like, if I want to see Christina, I'd rather just see Christina at Christina. Yeah, like, but like you saw her costume that she did for LA Pride. She had like, you know, like a dildo. And plus she was like in our environment. And it was like, I don't know. It it made the young kids feel very special to have a major headliner at their Pride. I don't know. I felt like I was texting you and there was nothing special about that Pride. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> My experience was quite different. And Christina's. <laughs> yeah, than, than the kids. So, um so here's another hot topic. And I honestly tell you, I thought you were going to be more um, like, you know, fuck the corporations and all that. But no, you're kind of even keel. I, I thought you were going to be. Well, I mean, it's, all, it's also because, like you said, I'm also well aware that even the corporations that are good are, are literally the ones donating to the same politicians. Yeah. Even the charities that are good are the ones donating to the same. Like, there's just there's really not that many good people in the world. So. There's certain battles you pick and choose, and attacking a rainbow crest, like striped toothpaste, I'm not going to go after. <laughs> oh, I just think it's a hate crime when Oreo puts out pride Oreos. It's like, we're not supposed to be eating that. I'm a gay man. <laughs> and the whole package is gone. Wah, wah. <laughs> um, do, okay, so I let's get. Love, I do love um, rainbow goldfish. Oh, well, I have a package here. That's so good. <laughs> But that one's year round, so <laughs> pride year round. Yeah, <laughs> you're always supporting. Uh, okay, so let's get to another. This is kind of like an entertainer hot topic, um, you know. And you were mentioning one of the prides that I was at um, didn't quite go the way that I expected it. And I know you get booked all around the nation for many different events. You've done all size of events. In fact, you and I have an event in Florida in November. You know, I've worked with other performers that have been major divas. I've worked with major stars that have had no diva complex at all. And we know certain prides, certain things are not going to happen because of organization or whatnot, such as it's super hot and the air conditioning is not working or whatever. But when you're booked for a gig, how much, like for you, like when do you say, you know what, this is not working for me. These are the demands that I need just to show up. Or do you go, hey, it's a gay event supporting the community. Let's go with the flow. I mean, my, I don't really have much demands outside of, like, what you pay for my fee, airport, hotel. Um, I, I don't really have demands because, like I said, it's not a big deal. Um, the only thing I do get frustrated with is I did an event recently where they told me the wrong time to show up. Oh. And I, and I always show up on time. Yeah. So they told me 6 o'clock. So I show up at 530 because you're supposed to be in my head. I'm like, you should always be early. Yeah. And then I found out they're like, oh, that was a, met a typo. It was supposed to be show up at 930. Oh, no way. No way. Uh, -uh. That's and, that's way too long. And I was a little bit pissed because I'm like, OK, so I just paid now an Uber to go to have to go back again to have to re and go. So that's when I, wa I wasn't a diva, but I was like, you do have to pay for my Uber that I literally did to do nothing. Yeah, no, that's that's understandable. Yeah. I mean, I was at an event, had major headliners, not hurting for money. Um, the air conditioning wasn't working in the trailer. And then I was told, oh, if there's another party in between, you have to take your stuff out of the trailer, let them change, then you can move back. But then when they're done performing, then you have to go back out so that they can change again. And I was like, so, wait, right, what? That's my only thing that, like, I've also just learned it just, it doesn't matter how successful you get. If you do events in nightlife, your quote unquote dressing room is going to be a broom closet shared by 20 <laughs> other strangers. Because I've talked to literally some of the most famous drag queens in the yeah. world who are millionaires who still get put into dressing rooms that are broom closets with sewage on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> or they're having to put their makeup on like in an Uber. <laughs> yeah. I I just I I don't think the I don't think bar spaces are equipped for it. 
So there's just there's just no winning in that situation. Well, I mean, I'm talking about trailer situations though, where they did have multiple trailers and my work schedule was a seven hour in a row schedule. So I would assume at least let me get a trailer in between because it's blazing hot outside, by the way. I mean, I would never agree to an event like that for that reason of just not having air conditioning. I would, my mood would change so fast. You wouldn't want to hire me. Like hour two, they brought in these big fans. fans? But I thought, you know, it's for I the don't... community. <laughs> I don't know why people believe people don't know what fans are for. They fans, blow around hot air. <laughs> exactly. I was like, the whole point of a fan is to move air. <laughs> but if it's hot, you're just moving hot air. That's not, it doesn't work. And body odor. All of a sudden it was like, whoo, yeah. what's that? <laughs> All right, Teddy, do you have any burning hot topics? I mean, we have the, I'm trying to get you to agree to do a spinoff podcast of uh, when the new Sex in the City comes out called Che in the City. <laughs> okay, so uh, for audience that doesn't know, and just like that, which is the Sex in the City reboot, was renewed for season two to everybody's surprise. What I loved... Very busy to say. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, but here's the thing. All the gays are like, oh my God, that was such a terrible show. Every gay is going to be watching it when it comes back on. I just don't... hate it. I don't... Here's the thing that I don't fully... I don't think that's true. Because I was one of those gays that it got so bad I couldn't even finish it. I went to Wikipedia to see how the show ended. <laughs> so I think season two will be everybody tunes in for the first three episodes and then it drops off. And then the producers are going to say it was always meant to be a two-part, only two-season show. And now yeah. we're ending it. I guarantee it. Or do you think that they're listening to the audience from the first and they're going to be no. like, okay, let's no. calm down the no. wokeness. No. No, they're not. For the fact that they've already said they're bringing back Samantha, but still in text form. Well, here's the headlines, though. It's like Samantha uh, uh, returns, for, or uh, Samantha will be part of... But she's not returning. Return. She's still just texting. I know, and it's like, how is that a headline? But like everyone's like, ah! And of course, we know Kim Cattrall's busy in Queer as Folkland. She's um, busy with so many projects right now. Yeah, and she looks great. But even the actors themselves, like Sarah Jessica Parker, Cynthia Nixon, when and just like that was ending, they're like, "Yeah, it, you know, it was it was our return to say goodbye in, in a new form." And then they were like, "Let's just get over it, right?" And but now that season two is happening, they're like, "Oh yes," and we're excited to carry on the story. It's like, "Bitch, that's not what you were saying six months ago." Well, I also found out from an inside source, which I'm not going to name, that Sarah Jessica Parker didn't even want to do the series. Oh, I don't know about that. No. I thought she was one of the big proponents and the reasons no. why it was happening. She just did it solely for a paycheck. She wanted it to be just a movie. She didn't want to do a series because doing a series is a lot more work. And she was known on set to always show up about three hours late every day of filming. How was that okay? Yet Kim Cattrall was the problem. Because she was never the problem. Uh, mm, <laughs> mm. I mean, look, look at it this way. Kim Cattrall has gotten a lot of work, and there's been no complaints about working of her. Oh, you know what? That's a really good point. Has That's Sarah Jessica really good point. gotten a lot of work? No. Well, she did the show on Broadway with her husband, <sighs> Yawn. Oh, um, yeah. But she That's had COVID fair. for half of it, so. <laughs> now, okay, if you were Kim Cattrall, do you think it would be a smart move after all the drama for her to be classy and be like, okay, I'm going to come back for one episode and I'm just going to let bygones be bygones, film my part and be gone, but say goodbye to the fans. Don't you think that would make her the hero? No, because to be honest, she is the hero because she jumped a burning ship. Um, Sex in the City, the movie, the first movie was incredible. That was the perfect ending to a show. Fun. It was the icing that it just finished it. The second movie was just so campy that it made the show not feel real anymore. And it just, it it was going backwards. And then this series doesn't even feel like Sex and the City. The original creator of Sex and the City, both the TV show and the author of the book, said the show doesn't feel like Sex and the City. I think she did the right thing of saying like, I've done that character so many times. I'm proud of it, but she's done. Yeah. Like I I'm not honestly not a fan of constant reboots just to do reboots because it starts to feel like all you're doing is making a thing about, "Hey, do you remember this thing?" instead of actually being like, "We have a reason to do a reboot." You know what I'm saying? 
Well, okay, so you know, I'm a huge, huge sci-fi fan. I'm a huge Trekkie. I also love Star Wars. We have so many iterations of Star Trek right now. We have Strange New Worlds, which has blown uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Like, it's the highest ranked show of any of the Star Trek franchises. But we've had that. We've had Picard. We've had all Discovery. I think we're diluting the whole universe. And then Obi-Wan came out, and it's with Ewan McGregor, plays Obi-Wan Kenobi. And then Intensity, Darth Vader is also in it. And it's like... Seeing him on TV, not looking the same as from the movie, it dilutes and it dirties the whole memory of like Darth Vader. It's like, well, now he's just any character that'll show up whenever they need him. And it's it's not good. You, and you just said it like it doesn't feel special. It feels yeah. like it, it feels like the reason why I don't like Marvel movies of that. They have so many characters slowly so they can be like, look what we have here. Look what yeah. we have here. Look what we have here. Instead of being like, OK, but why are they there? Is there yeah. an actual reason, or are you just doing it to say, like, your character is here? Well, and, like, with Marvel, the whole multi-universe is, like, in Star Trek, they always revert to time travel. I'm like, well, if you can go back in time and fix it, then death doesn't really have any high stakes. When you blow up, you know, a starship, it really doesn't mean anything, because you just go back in time and fix it. It lowers all the stakes, and nothing matters at the end. I know. I there's. Have you watched the show Umbrella Academy? Uh, no, but I've heard a lot about it. And I know that Elliot Page, um, I know he starts the season like addressing his transition. And I heard it's it's really well done and it's it's very classy. But there is one character on the show that like I can't get past how powerful she technically is and they don't use it. So, for uh, example, her power is she can just say, I heard a rumor and whatever she says, the person will do. So in my head, I'm like, well, you have the most powerful power. You could just end all of this every single time. Yeah. I just, I, I hate when it's a show that I can't let myself ignore that reality because then I can't get in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So if you had that power, what what would the rumor be that that you would say say to somebody? I don't know. Like you could just easily say, like, I heard a rumor that you're going to cure cancer, and if it's just whatever you say comes true, yeah, then you did it. Or I heard a rumor that. All these people attacking me are all going to blow up. Like I, I don't know. I just I'm not the person that you should invite to a superhero movie because I'm. A <laughs> oh, I hate movie. it. I'll hate every minute of it. I've tried watching Doctor Strange, the sequel. I've tried watching it three times. I've tried watching Eternals three so times. I can't because Doctor Strange, the first one, was so good. It, it, it was fine, you know. And this the second one, just so quickly, you're just like, oh my god, this is just it's so a bad. mess. And I, did they do something with his hair, this one? <laughs> yes. Okay. Can we talk about the scene where he's on the balcony in a suit and he does this whole twirly thing and he's in his cape? That was the gayest moment I have seen in any movie from the 20s, 1920s, <laughs> all the way to current day was the gayest thing. And it was hilarious. There's also apparently a few parts in the movie when you can see stage hands accidentally <laughs> still in the background of the, on the movie. Like, we just give up. We just give up. Okay, so another hot topic then, kind of leading from that, you know, uh, Fire Island came out, um, and it's the retelling of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. It features uh, uh, Asian characters for once. It talks about classism, racism. Um, it's supposed to be funny. We also have the reboot of Queer as Folk. Um, the whole season is out. Um and, you know, I'm a journalist, so I get assigned interviews and I have to cover and I have to review. There's the unspoken law that because it's LGBTQ, because it's talking about such important themes, you can't say, hey, this kind of sucked or the acting sucks. Well, I want to ask you, because um, I haven't watched either. Like, one, I don't really like movies. Two, I'm just half the time I'm usually not interested in, like, gay stuff. I know that sounds like I I'm supposed to support it. But I'm just like, God, I deal gay is enough as it is. It took me so long to watch Looking. I had to literally have friends make me watch Looking. I actually did like L Looking. I liked Looking season two. Yeah, I, I did too because I it, thought... It figured, it figured itself out and I was sad that yeah. it, it, it ended because season two finally had comedy in it, which it was missing in season one. Season 100%. one was, it was too heavy. I don't know. That's a show that I actually hope comes back. Well, they did the movie, and they're not ever going to come back. <laughs> oh, I didn't watch the movie. Like I told you, I don't like movies. Oh, well, but you should, because it really kind of ends things. or it, 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 It's it's nice. And that's I what I feel like with Queer I as well. Like movies. I, I'll never watch it. Trust me, I don't like movies. So even like if you had like a date come over, and like Netflix and chill, and he's like, hey, let's watch this movie, you would just like, no. 
Well, one, I would never have a date come over because I don't like people coming over my place. <laughs> um, but no, if he asked me to watch a movie, I would say no. If he asked me to watch a TV show, I'd say yes. Even if the TV show, each episode is two hours long, I'll, I'll watch it. But yeah. if it's a movie and it's an hour yeah. long, I won't yeah. watch it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but in your like hot topic, in your mind, should we be so concerned in supporting our friends that are writers, actors in these kind of projects, or that we're so happy that these stories are in mainstream media? We, and um, here's the thing is that like we should support it no matter what, because like we're still not there. And that that's why, like, if I have a friend that releases their own song or single, I'm gonna support it, even if it's terrible. Just we know it, most times it's gonna be terrible, Teddy. <laughs> yeah, we just have to. And that's why, like I said, even if Queerest Folk is not good or something, which I haven't watched it yet, it just, I'm going to support it because it needs to be there. I mean, it, it definitely is intense. They throw a lot of stuff at it. And I feel like they, they miss the humor component. Um, but it is a Queerest Folk like we've never seen before. Right. You just nailed it. And that's what I don't like about gay movies. I don't like about gay shows. And, I, and this is what I've talked about where other shows that usually when they talk about sex workers it's always like the trauma side, the trauma, trauma, yeah. trauma. We all are living the trauma as it is. I don't think our shows have to always be about like how hard it is to be gay. I think it can be just like, we're, it's a great show and we're gay. Well, and if we're depicting gay life, like, you know, you get a group of gay guys together, even if you're at a funeral, there's going to be some humor to it. There's yes. going to be some sass to it. Here and I'm go. not talking about like Jack McFarlane snapping and being sassy all over the place. You're talking about like Golden Girls are... level. Yes. Of, like, no, and like, all right, for example, Golden Girls was a show that each episode usually had a very heavy topic that like, yeah. you would cry at usually. Yeah. But it's weaved in a show that also is doing dark humor and like, that's how a gay show should be done because that's yeah. how we are. We'll that's make a joke. Exactly right. We'll make a joke during the darkest of moments of something that is like terribly heavy. And that's just, like that's how we alleviate trauma. That's how we alleviate pain. It's not every episode just being like woefully sad and dark. <sighs> um, but I still think that we should call each other on quality because if we're continually blindly supporting material just to have material that we're not challenging writers to be better we're not challenging actors to go to acting so class and be better I, actors i have hope and it's with billy eichner's um rom-com um and honestly it looks actually good i have my own feelings towards billy eichner <laughs> for no okay. reason no reason by the way i've never met him never talked to him never interviewed him i mean i've i've talked to him a few times in the dms so. Oh, has he slid in your DMs, girl? No, I slid into his, and he actually replied, and we've talked a few times. Oh, I'm sure he did. Um, oh. and I also, I always thought he was sexy. What? Oh my yeah. God! Did he send you any <clears throat> pics? No, no, he didn't. Um, and if he did, I would not share that because I don't share people's. We don't have to show it, but you could say like you got one. No, because then that's still the same. I want to know if there's any drama. So he was on that show, Difficult People, or something. And he was with his friend, Julie Kasner, Klausner, and they were like the duo. And he made fun of actors that got cast on American Horror Story, which he ended up doing. Every, <laughs> everything he made, they made fun of in that show, he's ended up doing, like selling out, quote unquote. And oh, she's I, not part of I his conversation that. anymore. I mean, I love that. Like, that sounds like me. <laughs> no, but did he leave his like comedy partner in the dust just to be famous? My drama, like in atmosphere, like picks up on that. What do you mean, leave your comedy person in the dust? So they created the show together, he and this girl, and they made fun of who Billy has literally become in real life years later. And she is not part of his journey. She's not writing for him. Uh, he doesn't mention her at all. He doesn't tag her. He doesn't include her. He doesn't reference that show. I don't think he has to. I mean, also part of life is evolving. You're not always going to be the exact same person. You're not always going to be with your exact same friends. As long as you're not actively trying to sabotage them or hurt them. Well, yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with him just being like, I'm not that same person anymore. I mean, so I interviewed Matt Rogers, who's in Fire Island. He's on Showtime's uh, new show with Molly Shannon. But he and Bone Yang from Saturday Night Live have been best friends since college. And they've had their separate, but they do the podcast together. And they're in Fire Island together. And they've found a way. He says, you know, your core group of friends is who you can create with and grow. Not yeah. always like side by side. But I thought that was a great statement. Is like, you know, 
you should never forget your past as well. And, you know. And I, and I don't think you will, because also you don't know if he won't reunite with somebody from his past for a new project. This is just a current journey he's on right now. And like, I don't think you have to bring everybody in at once. I don't know. I think there's something there. I'm going to find out. <laughs> okay. I think you're trying to look for something there. Yeah, I probably am. Okay. So Teddy, this is a hot topic. Um, I had this conversation in uh, through CyberSocket, through the awards, through some uh, emails that I've gotten, and it's a about diversity in porn. You know, we agree um, that there is more representation in porn, such as highlighting Asian actors, Black actors that are doing mainstream studios, they're exclusives, where it used to be niche porn, you know, like Latin Leche Man or, you know, uh, Noir Male, and now it's kind of all mixed. I got a few comments from Latino actors that are very upset because they feel that they're not included in that diversity. They're not highlighted. They're not exclusives uh, to the point that they're saying, hey, uh, the CyberSocket Awards were not diverse. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Number one, it was entirely fan based. Number yeah. two, it was entirely diversified, even more so because these awards are entirely fan based. We don't get a say in any of the winners. I mean, that again, this is, goes back to like my issue I always have of studios. Because if you look on like OnlyFans, I'm like, there's no issue of Latinos on OnlyFans. Right. Trust me. I was like, there's not. But like you just said with studios, I started thinking, I was like, oh my God, I actually don't know any exclusive um, Latinos for studios. Like I, I have friends that are black that are exclusive, but yeah. as far as like, Latinos and as far as Asian, I can't think of any exclusives. That's Not crazy. exclusives, but I, I've seen uh, a lot of Asian actors being uh, being highlighted and promoted, and I think that we are going to see exclusives. But because my initial reaction was like, "You're kidding! Everything's very diverse." And then they said, "Okay, name me a Latino exclusive," and I was like, "Oh, you're right." <laughs> the only thing that I did see about the cyber sockets that um, somebody in the audience commented to me that I agree with is there was no representation for bi actors. There was no representation for, like um, for trans actors, and and I agree. I I agree with her when she said that. I'm like, there does need to be a category that is for that. So maybe that's something that next year they could bring up. What I knew, and I I mean, you know, I'm the director of CyberSocket. I I can speak to that. Is um, CyberSocket? You know, it's under new management, but the legacy is built for gay men. That's even the tagline. It's resource for gay men. And so, is that evolution coming? For sure, because that's the evolution that's happening in porn. But the way that CyberSocket was, it's catering to gay men. That's the brand as it is now, um, and as we're kind of building on the legacy that was kind of established. So, will that growth happen? 100 percent true. Um, uh -huh. But we didn't get any by actors. Well, and it's funny because we say by um, like Caesar XES has filmed a lot of by porn. We know some of the gay porn stars like Roman Todd lead a straight, if not by life, um, Johnny Rapid, the same. So that kind of bi representation is there. But I see what you're saying as somebody that's famous for being bi or famous for being a trans performer. Yeah. But it's also, uh, you know, the individuals that were nominated and, and voted for. Like I said, it's entirely fan based. I know. And, and then that's the other thing that like... I do feel bad for her when she brings it up because, like, you know, it is fan based. So then you have the issue of like, okay, and the fans are the ones that are deciding. The fans are the ones that are not including. So it's it's hard because like you do need to encourage them, but yeah. how do you do it by still letting them be the ones vote? Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, and so when we were talking about this and two of the uh, porn Latino actors were, you know, upset, one of the other uh, porn stars there asked them and said, well, have you ever tried to get involved behind the camera? Have you ever tried directing? Have you tried producing? Have you ever met with the studios to talk about this? Have you ever filmed your own or written your own script? Have you tried to get behind the scenes? Because we know that that also affects a lot of change, such as mainstream Hollywood, women behind the camera, um, gay creators, gay writers are creating these projects that they can then Yeah, but I'm, also, I'm sure that there's a lot of politics in studio work that like to get behind it is probably even more difficult than it is to get in front. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, and there was that conversation too, is that there's this like group of elders in the porn industry that haven't gone anywhere in even 30 years. And there's this reticence because they're not reflective of the social media energy, reflective of the fan site, nope. reflective of even talking to the audiences. It's like, are they completely out of touch with porn audiences? 
I mean, we even saw at the award show, like there were certain people that were just very standoffish that are yeah. in that circle that you're just like, you really just don't want to be in the same world as everybody else. Yeah, it's so weird. Like that energy is just, it's, it's weird and it's dated. Okay, Teddy, I have like a personal um, hot topic for you. Oh God, I don't like these. <laughs> I mean, not like personal for you, the personal okay. like for me. So one of my best friends told me that, and I guess they discovered this like three months ago, but kept me out of it because I tend to be vocal and I can't hide my feelings, found out by, um, they had to send a text from their partner's phone because he was in the bathroom and he was like, oh, just answer it and send them this text. So she did. When she did that, what popped up were messages from dating apps and her boyfriend of three years had been sending dick pics to other girls. Oh, straight. This is a straight story. Yeah, yeah. It, it, okay. she, she's one of my straight best friends. Because I was like, if this is gay world, you'd just be like, babe, are we doing a threesome later? Yeah, yeah 100%. So, but she was like, I didn't want to tell you because you're going to take it out on him and you're going to say something. And I said, well, I won't say anything because you told me not to. But now I'm like, I don't even want to be in the same room as them together because I'm looking at her like, why are you such an idiot and letting this happen and staying with somebody? And then to him, I want to be like, you have one of the best girls and then you're doing this. And so it's like, now that friendship has kind of just, I, I, I can't hang out with them at all. Yeah, I, I understand because I, I'm on the same page of like, I'm very, I don't do fake. Yeah. And I also, to be honest, if there's an issue, it's better to just address it. So it's one of those things of, there's no point in you being fake because that time should be spent with her talking to him about the truth and him being truthful and them deciding how they want to work through it. Doing this whole, like, I just don't want to pretend it doesn't exist thing solves nothing. That's also, that's unfair to, like, that's unfair to her. That's also unfair to him because if it is a real relationship, you need to give him the chance to own up to what he did wrong and you need to give him the chance to work on it. You just deciding that it's not going to exist isn't going to make it go away. It's just going to fester out in other ways where you're going to lash out at your partner because you have this thing that you know about about them. I don't know. It's just, I don't know why. Why is she not talking to him about it? She did. And so he was like, oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. I, I won't do it again, blah, blah, blah. But she doesn't want me to address it. She doesn't want me to say anything. And well, part of I it's mean, like, you that's... can't say something to somebody like that and not expect something to be said. No, that's fair. Because at the end of the day, it is their relationship. Oh, no, I don't know. It's so wrong, though. Like, yeah. if you saw your best friend heading into oncoming traffic, you would say, get out of the road. There's oncoming traffic. Yeah, actually, no. I'm. I, it's, it's really muddy because it's one of those things. It's almost like you wish you didn't know because yeah. you can't unknow. Yeah. So it's hard for you to not be like, I hate you. <laughs> yeah. And like her boyfriend, I'm not even responding to his text. It was her birthday. And I didn't even go to the party because I, I just was like, no, can't do it. It's 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 stupid. And I'm and mad at her for being being uh, quote unquote weak and not being, hey, you're out of my life. Or, you know. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think it's because like I said, like, do you think it's worth working on and staying together? Or do you think? It's no, worth... I mean, I've never li liked this guy anyway. <laughs> OK, then that's different because like, like I said, like people are human. And I don't think. Uh, yeah, of course. I don't think relationships should end because somebody cheated or somebody did this. But if it's one of those where you're like, he already seems like he's a bad guy, then you know he's lying. He's just like lazy, uninterested. He doesn't okay, he's, really he's attempt not to... Just, he's not going to stop them. Yeah, when he, yeah, and 100%. And it wasn't he's like he had a one-night stand. It wasn't like he met a girl at a bar and had a one-night stand. Like for months, he's been messaging girls off of dating apps and sending his dick pics. So that's like meditated. That's also somebody that is, he's now spending a lot of work on that. Yeah. Which you're yeah. like, what is what are you doing with your life if your energy is spent just on hookup apps when you're monogamous? <laughs> yeah, yeah, girl, girl. All right, do you have any other uh, hot hot topics? I mean, besides, it's the end of the world. <laughs> <laughs> it literally feels that way, huh? It really does. I I don't know how anybody is celebrating the Fourth of July today, like. I mean, it, it's I, very hard because I've always I mean, been rah-rah country, you know, course, patriotism. You saw there's a mass shooting today, right? Yeah. At a parade. So yeah. the most American thing ever happened, <laughs> a mass shooting at a parade for 4th of July. I hate to say it, but 
now it's going to be a part of everybody's lives. So even pro gun people are not going to be able to ignore it because it's literally in their backyard. It's in their families now. I mean, they can ignore it. Um, there was a local politician there that already gave a press release saying it's time to move on from this and celebrate. Oh my God. Oh and my God. Literally within like, it was three hours after it happened. He released a press release saying it's time to move on America. You know, I hate to say it, but sometimes I I read all of the wackadoo conservative uh, tweets because I I can't believe yeah yeah they're I can't believe that they're actually saying this out loud like it's it's worse than an SNL skit like it is insane and I can't stop going down the rabbit hole of all these weirdos out there saying ridiculous lies though well like I I had one of those I had to I had to throw my phone down and stop myself because I was reading on. I don't know where it was. It was like, maybe it was Coco Peru's thing. She posted about the 10 year old girl that got pregnant. Yeah. And being forced to carry. And I started reading the conservative comments. I don't know why, but they are all saying like, this is so bad. This happened to her, but you know, God will turn it into a blessing. Her neighborhood will take care of her. Oh, and you're just reading this. You're like, you literally want to have a 10 year old give birth, hopefully live. And then, that's number one, if we're and, worried about life. And also, too, why are they all ignoring the fact of she was raped? Yeah. And the mental torment of raising your child that is from rape, that not every girl wants to deal with seeing a reminder of her rapist every day of her life. And to then tell her daughter, by the way, your father raped me. Yeah. And all of them were just saying, I know, but that doesn't justify murdering a baby. Okay, where are they going to be five years? Where are they going to be 10 years? You know, where's all this? And they're saying, oh, and then all the babies can be adopted. The average uh, domestic adoption cost like $70,000 is, is is what the fact is. So not even just that, though, like too, like how they keep saying, like, you know, everybody will take care of her and help her raise this baby. There is literally barely any resources in this country to help raise your baby. Yeah. One, there's no paternity to leave. Two. There's not even infant formula right now. Yeah. Like, that's what I don't understand about all this. We literally just said, we can't even feed a baby right now. And you're all like, it's it's God's plan. It's life. Well, and I have it's to say, life. I mean, and I have to say a number of our friends, influencers, you know, uh, when the Roe versus Wade was overturned, were on Instagram with their shirtless selfies saying, I stand with women. It's like, well, what the hell? I mean, and these are people that I know didn't bother to vote. Like, I know for a fact, didn't I, bother to vote, don't bother to vote, and they so just get on social media and do all that. I um, sent to your friend today about how I was like, I'm really shocked the amount of gays that are posting shirtless America pictures. Like, And, and literally the tagline is, we lost our vote, but we didn't lose our right to party. Yeah. And I... I, 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 I thought, I told a friend, I was like, listen, it's I'm so a thirst funny. trap. I do this for work, but there's a time and place and putting an American flag on your crotch and making a joke about this. It's just, it's not, it's not cute. It's very uh, cringeworthy. And yeah. I mean, for the gays to make Roe versus Wade all about them, you got to give it to us. We can turn anything and make it about us. <laughs> I, I can't with the gays sometime. Um, I just... God, that was like one time I, um, no, I can't say this. I, I know the couple, I'll tell you off air, but it was, it was a gay couple that um, made a very, very tacky post about after somebody died and turned it into all of themselves by posting like a nude in honor of them. Oh my God. Mm -mm. <laughs> Although I have to say, Teddy, if, if, if I go before you, uh, please feel free to post nudes. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> That'll make people happy. Like one of those Sears catalogs where it's like, I'm nude and there's like a reflection of you in the background, <laughs> your face looking to the stars. I'm all for that. I'm all, all, all for that. With a picture of your dog superimposed as me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only thing I could celebrate this July 4th was the Twilight Zone Marathon is back. Um, as a kid, I would watch that marathon every July 4th. Th those shows were super, super smart for it being like in the 60s. Oh, um, this, this is the old one, right? Not yeah, the, yeah, the, the original, one. original. So creepy. And the old ones uh, are still, the old ones are still creepy. Yeah, very creepy. Very, very creepy. I remember being terrified of the airplane one. 
Yeah, that one. Um, the one that I watched this morning was the Talking Tina doll, which was really well done. Um, so now I'm going to have nightmares. <laughs> yeah, what was that one about? So it's uh, this little girl gets a new doll and she's like, I'm Talking Tina and I love you. And her stepdad is just a mean piece of shit. And so when when the dad's alone with the doll, the doll is like, I think I hate you. I'm going to kill you. And he tries to get rid of the doll in so many different ways. And she just pops up and she just doesn't go away. And then it ends when he's walking down the stairs because he hears her and he trips on her on the doll and he falls down the stairs and breaks his neck and dies. I mean, she sounds like a queen. Slay. <laughs> talking Tina. Why is that not a drag queen? <laughs> I mean, that, talking Tina has to be a drag queen. Yeah. <laughs> What would your drag queen name be if, if you were ever in drag? Oh, it's Harry Bradshaw. Oh. <laughs> okay, when we do our um, uh, All About Shay or Sex and the Shay, uh, you Shay have in the city. Shay in the city. You have to show up as Harry Bradshaw one time. I will. And you have to show up as Shay. I mean, what, what do I really have to do? Yeah. <laughs> Some Where mascara. Is yeah. <laughs> All right, Teddy, do you have any other burning hot topic? Nothing's burning right here. Nope. <laughs> It's because you you are vaccinated. You are you are tested. You are you are ready to nope. go. No monkeys here. Only bears. <laughs> only bears. All right. Well, we are going to be back in the studio very soon with more studio. But we wanted to keep this going for everybody because uh, we had to catch up. Um, and plus, we get hot topics that you email to us, and you can email us at bearwithusgirl at gmail dot com, and that's g u r r r l at gmail.com um and thanks for tuning in and listening we we watch all your comments and everything i thought um, you were about to spell gmail i was like they can spell gmail yeah <laughs> well I don't, I don't know um <laughs> but again this show is brought to you by bear world magazine go to bearworldmag.com for everything in the bear world and cybersocket.com your resource for gay erotica cybersocket.com um and teddy where can people find and follow you you can find me on instagram at mr teddy bear Gur as well as Twitter at the triple X teddy bear. Yes. Is there anybody of note that you're going to be filming with coming up? Um, I'm going to find out tomorrow if I'm filming with a very, very famous porn star. So I will let you know. I don't want to jinx it yet. I am oh. always so uh, pleasantly surprised. I mean, you really do get around to all like the big <laughs> names, but even some of the up and coming stars. I'm like, damn. Um, I met uh, Lawson James in Dallas at Dallas oh, Pride. Awesome. And then I was looking at his content because he is hot as fuck. And then I was like, wait, there's Teddy Bear. <laughs> his like, body is incredible. Like he, I would say he's, he's the best body in the industry where I've literally been like, I don't know how your body looks like that. I mean, he is huge in front, huge in back. Yeah. His this... chest. He's a sweetheart. Um, so, but yes, I did. I did appreciate that scene. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm Alexander. You can find me on Instagram at Alexander is on air. You can find us on every uh, podcast platform, YouTube. Um, and like I said, we will be back in studio. So until next time, grr. <laughs> that has been another episode of Bear With Us, Girl, presented by Bear World Magazine and Cybersocket.com. Please take a moment to like, subscribe, comment, rate all the love and support you can give guys questions comments and suggestions email us at bear with us girl three r's at gmail.com until next time embrace the fur Grr.